In the name of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed and praised forever. Amen. The 13th and 16th verses of the 5th chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians. You were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. On June 29, 2008, 1,148 lay and clergy delegates, including 291 bishops from 29 countries, representing half of the world's 80 million Anglicans, unanimously adopted the Jerusalem Declaration and its accompanying statement. Among other resolves, the statement called for the formation of an Orthodox province in North America. That province, the Anglican Church in North America, was constituted at St. Vincent's Cathedral, Bedford, Texas, and Christ Church, Plano, Texas, between the 22nd and 24th of June, 2009. One year later, and 10 years ago. Today is Gafcon Sunday, the observed anniversary of the founding of the Global Anglican Future Conference Movement. Details of giving are in the keys. I encourage your generosity. In what no one could have expected a decade ago, our Archbishop, my successor, His Grace Foley Beach, is now the global chairman. As the historian said, mirabile dictu, marvelous to speak. The Jerusalem Declaration begins with these words, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, the participants of the Global Anglican Future Conference, have met in the land of Jesus' birth. We express our loyalty as disciples to the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus. We joyfully embrace his command to proclaim the reality of his kingdom, which he first announced in this land. The gospel of the kingdom is the good news of salvation, liberation, and transformation for all. When you get your Book of Common Prayer 2019, you'll find these words on page 791. For now, you'll have to trust me. Here, here again, the last sentence. The gospel of the kingdom is the good news of salvation, liberation, and transformation for all. The new relationship that Jesus brings, the kingdom of God, offers salvation, liberation, and transformation for all. From the beginning to the end, the New Testament is about the establishment of the kingdom of God on this earth, foreshadowing the eternal kingdom described in the book of Revelation. From the first words of John the Baptist, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Through all of Jesus' preaching, if you doubt this, just look at Matthew 9 and verse 35. To his resurrection teaching, described in Acts chapter 1, verse 3. To the very last verse of the Acts of the Apostles, Acts 28, verse 3, summarizing... Paul's preaching at Rome. The New Testament is about a new relationship, about a kingdom relationship, 
about intimacy with the King of Kings, about being born again, literally born from above, through faith in Christ, and acceptance of His atoning work on the cross. Note well, if you think I am distorting the message, that even the last four words of today's Gospel reading from Luke 9, verses 51 to 62, are the kingdom of God. As the Jerusalem Declaration says, the good news of this kingdom is about salvation, liberation, and transformation. It is about all three. And that is the point I want to drive home this morning. Did you hear the opening words of today's epistle reading? For freedom, Christ has set us free. So what has Christ set us free from? From the kingdom of this world. From the kingdom that the devil, the deceiver, the adversary, the accuser, the father of lies, rules. Christ has set us free from the rebellion, from sin, from the need for the law. Christ has set us free, in the words of the baptismal liturgy, from the world, the flesh, and the devil. In Paul's argument in Galatians, Christ has set us free from the law, from trying to fulfill what only Christ could fulfill. We are justified, Paul argues, by faith, not by works. Our salvation comes from faith in Jesus, from our baptism into Him, from our incorporation into relationship with Him. Paul is arguing in Galatians against the Judaizers who are insisting that to be a Christ follower, one must also fulfill Old Covenant law. Verses 2-12 to 12 of chapter 5, the verses left out from this morning's epistle reading, are an argument against those who are insisting on circumcision. So here is the problem. If we are set free, liberated, if we are not dependent on our works, then why not sin, sin, sin? That's the question. Why not embrace that monumental list of works, works of the flesh, that Paul gives us in verses 19, 20, and 21 of Galatians chapter 5? Remember that list, we just heard it. The works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgy, and things like these. There are 15 sins named, but Paul obviously can think of many more. Some of Paul's contemporaries would actually come to teach that because of our liberation from the law, which Paul so successfully argues in Galatians, believers were actually free to do all these things. Sounds very modern, doesn't it? All of us, when we fall, behave as if we were free to do these things. Our congregational trials of the last year have especially tested us as regards to enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions. Have they not? St. Paul exhorts us not to submit again to a yoke of slavery. The Apostle is especially concerned that we 
in his own words, bite and devour one another. In verse 16, Paul gives us the way forward. I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Salvation, liberation, transformation. These are an inseparable triad, like the triad of penitence, restitution, and reconciliation that are the triad of forgiveness, or like the triad of faith, hope, and love. In 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11, Paul writes, You were washed. You were justified. You were sanctified in the name of the Lord Jesus and in the Spirit of our God. Salvation, washing, liberation, justification, transformation, sanctification. You were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified. We have been saved. We have been set free. But have we been transformed? So friends, here is the transformation piece. The Holy Spirit given at baptism, stirred up at confirmation or reception, and available to every one of us in every moment, in every challenge, in every temptation. We can live for and in the kingdom of God, not because of our strength, but because we have a God who not only saves us by Jesus Christ, but who strengthens us with His own Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's name in Scripture is Counselor, Advocate, Paraclete, literally the one who walks alongside, Guide, Comforter, literally Strengthener. The Jerusalem Declaration has it right. The Gospel of the Kingdom is the good news of salvation, liberation, and transformation. It is the good news of not just salvation, or not just salvation and liberation, but of salvation, liberation, and transformation, all three. You see, Our triune God really has given us the possibility of His kingdom experienced here and now, not just in salvation by the cross of Jesus, or liberation from our slavery to sin by the will of the Father, but also in the reality of personal transformation by the work of the Holy Spirit within us, enabling us to walk by the Spirit without gratifying the desires of the flesh. Just call on the Holy Spirit in temptation and in your freedom. What Jesus promises in John chapter 14 is what all of this is about. Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans, We will come to you and make our home with you. This is the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the good news of salvation, liberation, and transformation for each one of us. Right here, right now. In our families and relationships in our congregations and neighborhoods, in our work and witness in this fallen world. Then, friends, forever. Paul writes, you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, 
but through love serve one another. I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. 